Good morning and welcome to the second edition of this webinar, Golden Droplets. My name is Ricardo Valls. I'm a PGO registered in the province of Ontario, Canada with over 36 years of international experience. And today we are going to talk about memory, where to keep your data both in your computer and online. I will start by sharing my screen and we will see some of the system that I use to keep my data. First one, we'll start talking about this Dropbox. And everybody knows Dropbox is one of the best available systems for uh, not only keeping your data, but synchronizing the data through all your uh, computers, cell phones, everywhere. Uh, Dropbox also has a thing called Dropbox Notes that allows you to write and collaborate uh, on papers. For example, you are working on a PowerPoint presentation or a, or a meeting with notes and everybody in your team can work on Dropbox. Uh, all the systems that I will be explaining today have a free version, usually limited to one gigabyte or two gigabytes of memory, which is usually enough for what we are dealing with. And again, you can have several different systems that way you can collect up to six or eight or 10 gigabytes of free information. The Dropbox uh, pay version is a little bit expensive. The second one, which comes with Microsoft Office, the system that almost everybody has, is OneDrive. And the advantage of OneDrive is that, well, if you pay for Microsoft Office, then OneDrive is included. And you can have as many files and, you know, have a lot of storage. The big advantage is that if you are writing a document on Word, for example, or a table on Excel, it will automatically save it into OneDrive and at the same time synchronize OneDrive with the cloud and every other computer or iPhone that you have. OneDrive is very good system. The way I use these things, uh, for example, because I use Microsoft, uh, all of my Excel, Word documents, PowerPoints, I will keep it on mainly on OneDrive because it's simple. It's already being saved by the program. Now, Google G Drive for me is one of the best available. Again, is uh, it has a lot of, of of space to use, and I do pay for a little bit more. It's like two or three dollars a month. It's almost nothing, and it it not only gives you the option of again saving your files, saving an in infinite amount of pictures and all these things and synchronizing with other uh, computers that you have. You also have the option of making Google Document, Google Sheet, Google Slides. That means the the Chrome, the Google, the Google Drive version of Microsoft is here, is included. And if it has a lot of advantage over anything else. For example, if I open a document and I can share it with somebody, we can work two or three people at the same time in the same document. You can translate uh, immediately. And one of the best things that I use this for, you can take a picture of, I don't know, a poster or, or an image and you put it here and the system will OCR the image and convert it into text, text that you can then copy and paste and work with it anywhere you want. Again, my drive, I use it mostly for my business uh, software. 
Now, we recently have a new uh, system, Canadian based, called Sync. And Sync has the one advantage. First of all, two advantages. First of all, it's much cheaper than Dropbox, it's like 10 times cheaper. And the big advantage is uh, his, his privacy. The data that you send get, gets encrypted inside Sync. That means that they nobody can know what you save in your synchronized folders. The disadvantage of having this system is that you cannot do searches. In Dropbox, you can go to the search and just write a letter or you know a word, and it will search the whole database and find all the documents that contain that letter or phrase. Here, you cannot do this. You really need to remember the the name or, or where is information that you need because that's it it's encrypted and you cannot do anything else there are many other um, systems online uh, one of them is the box uh, and iCloud cloud me you can find you can just go to Google make a search and say free drives and it will give to you. Now, these are the system that I use to keep my information synchronized between my computers, my iPhone, etc. But sometimes, and not sometimes, many times, you need to have the information in the cloud so it will be accessible to other people. Let's say, for example, that you just wrote a paper and it contains a, a table of Excel that you cannot include it as easily in the document. So you just need a place where you can put all this supplementary information online so people that are reading your reports or your papers can go there, download the Excel and repeat the experience, etc. One of the best systems that I know for this is Mendeley data. And Mendeley is associated, of course, with Mendeley, the uh, manager of literature that we will be talking probably next episode. But here you can save any type of documentation. Uh, you can save even the original article. And it creates a link, it gives you a DOI, it creates a link, and you can share that link with anybody that you want. Or you can put the link itself in the paper so when people are reading your paper, they know where to go and find the data. So Mendeley Data is really good. Another one that is very powerful is Data in Brief. And again, here you can, it's, it, this is from Elsevier. So here you can submit the paper and also submit the additional data. And as assisted to submit paper, it will also give you a DOI, and it's a very useful way to put that information online for everybody to be able to access it. Data Publisher. This is specifically for earth and environmental sciences. Uh, this is where you can put, for example, uh, data from your drilling program or your uh, petrographical studies or whatever. You can really put any kind of data and also search for data. Sometimes you will like to have data to test uh, the theory or an idea that you have, you can come here to Pangea and find this data to use for. Another one that I use is Figshare, and it's, it's similar to what we just uh, saw, and I will not log in, it's, it's similar to the ones that they used before. We have the Wolfram Data Depository, again, it's, it's have a dual, function. You can keep your own data, you can find data that you need to test a theory that you have. 
Earth Chem. Uh, uh, again, you can you can keep your data here usually in the sense that you are uh, contributing with your data to the knowledge of a region. If your company, for example, is a public company, well, after you have published your 43101 on CEDAR and the information becomes uh, public, then you can put it here. The difference is that in a, in a 43101, you cannot put an Excel file, you can put the table, but it's, it's not digital. Here you can put the tables, you can organize it and, and customize it by region, type of data, etc. It's a really good place to keep your information and of course to find information that you may need. One last one is the GeoPass, which again is very similar to the previous one, but this one gives you like a code, an identification number that uh, will uh, keep a record of your contributions. So this is good if you are in academia and, and you know, in academia, in academia you need, really need to be recognized for every thing that you do for, for publishing. So the GeoPath will be a good, a good place. But if you're not in academia, you are in, in the industry, this is also a good way to recognize your company. So these are basically the, the places that I mostly use. We also have the Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. And as you know, Wikipedia allows you to publish data, uh, publish links to other sites uh, where you can get this information. Of course, you can also, if you have, for example, a video, you can upload it to YouTube. Uh, I will talk about all those things later on. But these are the system that I use most to first have a good synchronization between the, for the data in my devices, computers, iPhone, etc., and also online, so other people can. Uh, use it. Uh, so that is all for today. Uh, please subscribe if you want to keep in touch with me. And well, until the next episode. Have a great day. This is Ricardo Valls, valsvg at gmail.com. Seeing you. Have a great day.